In this video, we will discuss about the local anesthesia and the various classification of the local anesthesia. So, we will be discussing all the four important classification that are important for NEET examination in the local anesthesia. So, starting with the local anesthesia definition, what is local anesthesia? That is nothing but we have to anesthetize a local area that is a circumscribed area has to lose the pain sensation that's it and there should be no loss of the consciousness so patient should be conscious of course so local anesthesia is defined as the loss of sensation in a circumscribed area that's why it is local of the body caused by depression of two things either excitation in nerve endings or inhibition of the conduction of the impulses in peripheral nerves and it produces just loss of sensation in a circumscribed area without inducing any loss of consciousness. Now first of all let's see the classification of local anesthesia that is the basic classification based on the chemical structure. So we should know that there are basically three chemicals that are contributing to the uh, formation of the local anesthesia. So one can be the ester based, amide based and one of the important thing quinoline based that is centribucridine. Why I want to focus on this more because this is the only uh, one member of this classification. Now coming to the ester. Now the esters can be derivatives of the benzoic acids or esters can be derivatives of para benzoic acid. Amides we don't have any subclassification. So starting with the esters, esters of benzoic acid, we have butacaine, cocaine, ethyl amino benzoate that is also known as benzocaine, hexylcaine, piperacaine and tetracaine. So these are certain classification or certain members of the uh, benzoic derivatives of the esters. Then we have the esters of parabenzoic acids. So these are chloroprocaine procaine and propoxycaine. After that in amides we have atricaine, lidocaine, prilocaine, etidocaine, dibucaine, bupivacaine, mapivacaine and ropivacaine. And in quinoline we have only centibucridine. Uh, so these are certain uh, members and important members of the local anesthesia and we have to Remember these uh, very strictly because uh, they can form your basis for a lot of questions on LA. So the only natural local anesthesia is the cocaine. Rest all are synthetic. So there can be another classification based on this synthetic and uh, natural. So natural one will be cocaine and rest all fall in the category of synthetic. Next classification we have according to the biological site and mode of action. So for this we have to uh, remember that it has been classified into four categories class A, B, C and D. So the class A acts through the receptor, B also acts through the receptor, the third one the C1 is receptor independent and the fourth one is the combination of both receptor independent plus the receptor based. So uh, we will get into detail first let's see. In the class A classification, the agents acting at the external surface of the nerve membrane fall in this category. So what are the examples to this? This is biotoxins that is tetrodotoxin or sexotoxins are the example of class A type of local anesthesia. Then we have class B that is also going to act on the receptor but it will be acting on the internal surface of the nerve membrane. So the quart quaternary ammonium analogues of lignocaine or lidocaine like scorpion venom all these are the examples so scorpion venom or the quaternary ammonium analogue of the lidocaine fall in this category then we have class c that is acting by receptor independent physicochemical mechanism so uh, very important to this and the class c contains the benzocaine and this can be an important question also that which of the clinically used anesthesia is acting by the receptor independent me uh, mechanism and that will be benzocaine. So that is an important question for NEET examination. Then we have class D. So in the class D all the uh, or most of the clinically useful local anesthesia agents falls. So articaine, lignocaine, 
mapivicane and prelocane can be the example. So these all belong to class D category and that again can be a potential question in your exam. So agents which are acting by combination of both receptor and receptor independent mechanism, these all fall in class D category. Now the next category is the based on mode of application. So on the basis of mode of application, either they can be applied topically or they can be injected. So for the topical one, we are further categorizing these, subcategorizing these into soluble and insoluble. The soluble includes cocaine, the only uh, natural uh, anesthesia, local anesthesia. Then we have lido, lido cocaine, hydrochloride, tetracaine, binoxinate and benzyl alcohol. While in insoluble, we have benzocaine, butyl amino, benzoate and lidocaine. Now the injectables which can be used through the injections, so these are lidocaine, we can see here these are lidocaine, mepivacaine, tetracaine, bupivacaine and dibucaine. So we can remember these by a mnemonic that is limited best medicines. So for this we can use to remember the injectables one. L stands for the lidocaine, T stands for tetracaine, B is bupivacaine, uh, D is dibucaine, then we have B that is bupivacaine and M stands for mepivacaine. Now we have uh, the third classification or the next classification is based on duration of action and again a lot of questions can be asked, a typical question can be asked on the basis of the uh, duration of actions of local anesthesia. So first category is the ultra short acting and in this the action is generally less than 30 minutes and it is used for local infiltration. So a uh, certain LA without vasoconstrictor because vasoconstrictor are the reason to uh, increase the time of the duration or the action of the LA. So without vasoconstriction we can use procaine we can use 2% chloroprocaine, 2% lidocaine and 4% prilocaine but without vasoconstrictor. Then we have the short acting ones. So in the short acting we have the time limit as 45 minutes to 75 minutes. So uh, almost uh, 45 to 75 minutes of the action is considered as short action. So short acting LAs are 2% LA with a concentration of 1 is to uh, 1 lakh adrenaline. Then we have 4% prilocaine for nerve block and 2% mapivacaine with vasoconstrictor. After that we have the medium acting. In the medium acting we have the time duration between 90 minutes to 150 minutes and that is shown by 4% prilocaine with 1 is to 2 lakh adrenaline and 2% lignocaine or 2% mapivacaine with vasoconstrictor for pulpal anesthesia. So these are medium acting. Now most commonly they ask on the long acting anesthesia. So in the local uh, long acting local anesthesia the duration is generally more than 180 minutes. So what are the long acting uh, local anesthesia? 0.5% bupivacaine along with 1 is to 2 lakh adrenaline. 0.5 to 1.5% of atidocaine with 1 is to 2 lakh adrenaline, then dibucaine 1 is to 2 lakh adrenaline and 4% tetracaine with 1 is to 2 lakh adrenaline. So these are the long acting local anesthetic agents and they are very important for exam point of view. So as I already told that uh, long acting LA are important, they are asked a lot in exam so we can remember the, these by a uh, mnemonic known as Delhi Express Trill. Bombay. So D stands here for the dibucane. This is the longest acting and most toxic type of the local anesthetic agent which is long acting. Then we have atidocaine 200 minutes is the duration. Then tetracaine and bupivacaine will be having 175 minutes of duration of action. Now the next classification is based on the potency. So low potency is there for the procaine and chloroprocaine. Intermediate potency is there for lidocaine and medivacaine and high potency is there for dibucaine, tetracaine and bupivacaine. These are all the members of the long acting LAs also.